Well, good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's good to see y'all, y'all, and uh, bright and happy. It's great. Um, as you can see on the board, it says Tammy to Nepal. Um, March 6th through the 16th, um, I, am a, I am going with a team of uh, medical uh, professionals to Nepal. Uh, Grace School of Theology has put this together, and uh, we're really excited. There's 10 of us. Um, some of you know who Dr. Paula Krupstadt is. She's a pediatrician and functional medicine doctor. She's one of them. And Dr. Hewitt, she's a dentist uh, in the community, and she's going. And so we're going to be offering pediatrics and dentistry. And then the rest of us, um, oh, we also got Trenda Lynch. Many of you know her. She's a nurse. Uh, she's going to be assisting. And then we have a dental hygienist as well. And then the other six of us will be providing support. And our main target audience are going to be little children. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be going to the slum areas of Nepal. And we're going to hopefully see about 100 people, 100 children, each day. And so for two days, we'll be in the slum areas uh, providing uh, just basic care of dentistry and, and uh, you know, and pediatrics. And then the third day, we have the privilege of going into a Hindu temple school. And so we'll be ministering to about 100 children there. And, uh, and that was, a, it's a relationship that Bishwa, Ramilla, who are, you probably heard their names if you've been around Grace long enough. Um, Bishwa Ramilla, Bishwa graduate is one of our graduates of Grace, and he's in his doctrinal program right now with us as well. And he helps facilitate the teaching center in Kathmandu of, of 46 students who are all graduating in September with oh. their undergraduate degree. And then many of them are going to go on and get their doctorate and ministry or biblical studies or something. And so the the last day that we're in Nepal, we're going to be giving dental care and basic um, medical uh, assistance to our students. So we got a lot going on. So if you, if you would, one, put us on your prayer list. Be praying now that we could stay healthy. Um, the, core, the, the virus is going around. Uh, it isn't probably, it, it's in Nepal like it is here, but it's not like it is in China. So um, we're not too concerned about that. We are concerned about this Durango or something like that fever that you get from mosquitoes. So um, there is some healthcare concern. <laughs> I'm really concerned for me. But anyway, uh, if you could be praying for us. But another way, if you want to be a part of this, um, I'm taking a suitcase. And I want to fill it with things to give to the children. Now, the one thing that is real easy is candy, but we're not doing that because that's kind of counterintuitive. Right. Yeah. <laughs> dentistry and healthcare. And, you know, here, fill you with sugar. So we're not taking candy. Um, Food-wise, the the only thing I may take is Slim Jims because you know beef over there. You can't eat the beef because. Cows are sacred, but they could eat a Slim Jim. I don't know what Bishaw said. We love Slim Jim. Really? Yeah. So those are those stick things. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm, I looked into Oriental Trading. Um, if you're familiar, they do bulk stuff uh, basically for children. And I could get 50 stuffed animals, little ones, for uh, $40 which is pretty good because I can't buy a stuffed animal for less than a dollar anywhere, even a dollar store, because you got to put tax with it. So if you would like to help contribute to that, I'm going to, I'm going to buy enough uh, for every kid so I could give something because they're going to get, they're going to have teeth pulled, <laughs> they're going to get shots. And I'm thinking, what would I want? I want a stuffed animal or something, you know, so, you know, if I go through all this. So if you want to contribute to that, or we're going to buy vitamins and take for the children, um, we're going to, we got supplements that we're going to be giving out to the children. Obviously, these are, this is a slum. They can't buy any of this, so we're giving it all out. So if you want to contribute to that, I am taking uh, and getting some of this stuff, these supplies. Um, and then, again, just be praying. It's It'll be an exciting 
opportunity for us. And I even have a group that's making wordless bracelets uh, where we could share the gospel um, in a track. I'll have a, it'll be a Napoli's. And so I'm allowed to give a hundred of those out at, believe it or not, the Hindu temple school. Whoa. So, uh, yeah, so it's crazy. You think it would be opposite, but it isn't. It's because the government will regulate the slums, but the school is run by somebody who's a friend to Bishwa. And so that's where we'll be able to give those out. So I'm pretty excited. So be excited with us. Uh, the second announcement I have is to remind you that we are doing the Ripple Effect Luncheon with Pam Tebow. And the 15th is the last day for the special rate of $35 per ticket. If you want to come, we would sure love for you to come. If you do not know, if you don't remember how to get signed up, just talk to me afterwards and I could help you get registered. Or you could go on our Grace app or you could go on the Facebook um, posting for Grace School. Uh, and uh, it's going to be lovely. It's March 18th. It's a Wednesday. And it'll be at the Springwood Marriott and near the S on Wonderful. In Midland, too. Yeah, and then and then right after that one, March 19th, is going to be, we're doing the same thing in Midland. So it's a great opportunity for new donor, uh, prospective donors. Uh, so we're, we're very excited about doing this. And again, selfishly, I ask you if you would pray for us, pray for me, because I get back on the 16th and then... On the 18th, Whoa. we do Tan, uh, Pam Tebow here, and then the 19th, we do it in Midland. So it's going to be a crazy March, but it's going to be exciting. And uh, so thank you. That's thank all you. I have. And go ahead and come up, Jane. Jane Baugh, I want to tell y'all, if you didn't know it, um, Jane's husband, Bob, went to glory. And um, she's back, all smiles, because she knows where he is. And... This was his wonderful day for him. Hard day for my friend, but she's full of joy because she knows. So she wants to make an announcement, and it's it's exciting. This is something that I think you'll all be excited about. Okay, first, just as a side note, I want to tell you about the little wordless bracelet. And Tammy's gone. Oh, there oh, you are. Tammy's I have to <laughs> rearrange these just a little bit. I taught Good News Club for years. And uh, we made all these. And once I was down in Mission, Texas, on the border, led several children to the Lord, and I, I gave them papers, a wordless book out of construction paper. But the song goes, My heart was black with sin Until the Savior came in His precious blood, I know, Has washed it white as snow And in God's word, I'm told I'll walk the streets of gold to grow in Christ each day, I read the Bible and pray. So I got to change the gold over to you after the flight. But anyway, Sewing Seas is going to be making a hundred of these tomorrow. We're thrilled to be a part uh, of doing this because yeah, it's, it's really close to my heart. You need to write. You need to get that song for us. Yeah. Well, yeah. Write the song. I need yeah. the song. And, and we'll, I'll make copies if you'll just write it down. Oh, okay. Okay. That's yeah. That's right. Sing it again. No, I remember it from my kids being way little teaching them that. Yes. Yeah, so that's all. Yes. Sing it again. Sing. Sure. Yeah. My heart was blind. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait. Okay. 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 <laughs> My heart was black with sin until the Savior came in. His precious blood, I know, has washed it white as snow. And in God's word, I'm told, I'll walk the streets of gold to grow in Christ each day. I read the Bible and pray. Thank you. So Yay. That's the gospel. <laughs> anyway, what I wanted to share with you this morning, I'm on the prayer team for Grace School of Theology, and Betty sends out all the prayer requests. And I was praying one Saturday recently, and I, I was just praying about all the different aspects of the ministry, and I thought, I'm a little confused because... Uh, Grace School of Theology started out to train pastors about the message of grace and help them learn to, to teach others that this is a love they can't earn, a love they can't lose. And so 
as I was praying that day, I thought, gee, here's uh, Ken over here, and he's doing this uh, ministry for people who are committing suicide, and, and here's Mark over here, he's teaching us, and I'm thinking, did we get sidetracked somewhere? I thought all this was supposed to go to training these pastors, so I mentioned it to Tammy, and she said, well, Daniel and, and Mark would meet with me, we did for two hours, and they explained the whole deal for me, I had no idea, and I wanted to share just that shortly with you this morning to know what's going on. So Mark came on board here, and he is a very gifted person. He can take a long semester's a course in the seminary and condense it to three hours. I don't know how he does it, but he can. Brilliant. So here's, here's what he needs. He needs a staff that can help him get all this online, and then they have a contact with, I mean, hundreds of one just one church, one group of churches that are in the same deal. And there are many others out there they could contact. Well, they could offer this course to them online, let's say $20 for one course. If all of those put that took a course, that would bring in like a million dollars. It would finance this seminary. Now, recently, as I understand, one of the million dollars contributors, I don't know if he died or what happened, but that money is coming in, so they're a little bit short on funds. Well, this would sustain the seminary. They wouldn't be dependent on uh, donors to come. Well, there is a man in Midland, so Mark needs $100,000 in order to get the staff he needs to put this all together and make it happen. Well, the Lord just spoke to my heart and said, Jane, get on board. So I'm on board <laughs> to help raise this $100,000. Well, the man in Midland said, Mark, here's $50,000 for you. Everybody who gives anything, I'll match it. So if you give $2, it's really 4 If you give $5, it's really 10 So I asked Mark about just telling you about it because no one knows about this. And he said, well, I don't know, Jane, this is just a Bible study, and this is free. And I said, I understand that, but people don't know this, and we've got to inform them and let them know. So when my dear Bob went to be with the Lord, I put that all gifts would go to yes. Grace School of Theology, because Dave Anderson led my husband to the Lord when he was 48, and baptized and buried my daughter, and married us. I mean, we're just interwoven with Dave Anderson like this. So um, I said to Shamika, and Shamika, money's going to be coming in <laughs> for, for remembering Bob. And I said, I want it all funneled into Mark's fund so that this $50,000 from Midland can match it. And we're just going to work toward that 100000 He will get his staff together. They will get this up and going. It is the most exciting thing I've ever heard of. Mm -hmm. And so I just know God's going to bless that and lead this to happen. I mean, he brought Mark back. And uh, Mark came to Dave and said, I want to work, go to work for Grace School of Theology. And Dave said, fine, you raise your support and you come join us. <laughs> we don't have any money to hire you. And he did that. God gave him the money to support him to be here. So I know he's got a further, further, further plans for Mark being here. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to share that with you, not asking you to give anything, but if you have some extra sun time and you think, well, where Lord would you want me to put this? If you'll just uh, give it to Shamika, and of course this is uh, Grace School of Spiritual Development, G-S-C-D, no, G-C-S-C. Oh, well, anyway, <laughs> X-Y-Z. Thank you. The Grace Center of Spiritual, spiritual Development. development. Okay. Yeah, Grace Center, G-C-S-D. Yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you because I was blown away. I had no idea of any of this, that here's $50,000 till, till July 1, sitting out here, and, and if that's matched, Mark's got his money. So, or if you have... If you have ten thousand, we can get. I'll, I'll do, and we'll get a couple of others, and we'll have the fifty thousand. Just saying. Anyway. <laughs> Just saying. I'm with you, girl. Okay. Anyway, if if the Lord lays it on your heart, I know um, 
the Lord would multiply that and bless it here with Grace Field Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. Well, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. All he has to do is sell a couple. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. It's all his anyway. And I remember um, sitting at the board meeting when Mark proposed his deal on, um, on the video. And the way he explained it just made it so simple. He wanted to start Grace Center for Spiritual Development, and he had a big funnel up there, and he said, everything that we do through the center will funnel down into Grace School of Theology, and it just keeps going. So we could not have a better spiritual leader with us. I just feel so honored that Mark is here and so thankful for him. Um, he's going through health issues, too. I would ask you to pray for him. And for his sweet Melissa. But um, I just, I'm so excited about what Jane has brought to our attention because honestly, like I said, the, uh, the Lord owns the money anyway. I, I feel like he's going to do it, but I feel like wouldn't it be great if we could be a part of that? I mean, just think, when I think about throwing a $20 bill for lunch or something, we could make that 40 to go to something that's eternal. So... All right, now for the fun part. <laughs> Not that that wasn't, but here's what we're going to do today. We're going to start on session four because not all of us are like me, but I think a lot of those who like me, that if I went all the way back to session one, do we even remember <laughs> session one? So I want us to start in session four, the Psalms of Praise, and this is Psalm 16. This one was definitely my favorite, um, Joy of the Journey, because that was my life with John for so long when he was dying of cancer, living with cancer and then dying from cancer. God had showed us both how we can live with joy in that journey. And um, is today the 11th? Mm -hmm. Tomorrow's February 12th. That's the day joy descended on him. And so our, our family celebrates February 12th mm -hmm. every year since that year that he said, joy has descended and he could not keep quiet about Jesus. It was the sweetest thing. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So, did first of all, did anybody write a song? And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to ask you to sing it, because if you're like me, you don't know how to put it into a tune. <laughs> did anybody write a song? I wrote it down, but, but it's not. It's more like a poem. That's good. That's good. All right, we're going to start with you. And then, um, Nell, you wrote one, too? Okay. Good. <laughs> I'll leave my card <laughs> Oh, oh, come on. You want Nell to go first? Okay, Nell. Well, of course, I'll have to tell you all that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You want to stand up here and do it so they can hear you, because then your voice is going out like that. I hope y'all don't mind doing that, but it's true. Then everybody can see you and your voice goes out. There you go. Hey, don't even ask Judy about my big boom. <laughs> well, I don't know that I want this to go off everywhere. Oh, come on. It, it's well, well glory to God. It's, it's a very uh, humbling experience. Uh, last night, I sat and wrote this. I wrote another one, but I talked to my daughter last night, our youngest daughter. And she was in rehab one year for alcoholism. She has been sober 18 months. And last night, she had a mishap. And I just sat down and wrote. Could you speak a little louder? No, we can't. And I just sat down and wrote. <laughs> oh God, my God, hear my prayer of need for rest. My heart is so heavy. Thank you, Father, for peace that you have given me in past situations. I know how real and present you are at all times. I need your shield. I need to be lifted with your hands, your mighty hands. My heart aches for my youngest daughter. She knows and loves you deeply, has worked in your work, 
Yet Satan continues temptation through her addiction of alcohol. Today, Father, she yielded after 18 months of sobriety. I beg you, O oh Father God, maker of heaven and earth, go to her, speak to her, open her eyes, open her ears, and open her wounded heart. Cast out desires to appease addiction. Fill her with your love. Bring her back to your obedience mm -hmm. and to the joys of obedience and sobriety. Mm -hmm. Hear my plea, Father, return her thirst for only you and your knowledge and mighty, mighty power. Salam. And I want all of y'all to, as I'm praying, be praying for her. Can we have your name to pray for her by name? Oh, no. Patricia. Okay, yeah. You said Rhett, right? I'm, I'm sorry. Did you say Rhett? Did you? Is that her nickname? No, I said Patricia. 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 We okay. call her Trisha. Trish, that's the only mm -hmm. one. Father, we just lift up your precious child, Nell. And I want to lift up Patricia, too, because I know how bad Nell's mother's heart is breaking. But I know, too, from experience with my own family, that the guilt and the shame of falling and giving in again is great on Trish. So, Father, I pray that you would remind her that she is loved in every single way, that we have all fallen short of the glory of God, but that you, while we were yet sinners, died for us. I pray you'll remind Trish of that, that she will not feel guilty or shamed, but that she will just say, Lord, help me again. I remember one time a pastor telling me, you don't even say the again part, because once he forgives, it's done. You do confess again, but you don't have to remind him again. You just say, Lord, I've messed up. So, Father, be with both of these sweet ladies and bless them as they continue this journey with you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you for sharing. That uh -huh. was beautiful. Did you drop your things? I'm sorry. It's okay. You got it? Yeah. Almost all. No, leave that, leave that there. No, I need it. Oh. <laughs> Well, <laughs> thank you, guys. You're welcome. All right, this one is mine. Okay. Oh, how are you? I just didn't want you to bend down again. Oh, we will be praying for you now and your mother's heart, and we will be praying for Trish. Um, I have a son who's an alcoholic, and he has asked me to come and spend the weekend with him because he needs to talk. So. I don't know what to expect, but I do know what to expect. So, anyway, well, how about you? Um, I, I did mine off Psalm 65. You know, that's all right. You can do it from whatever you want. Mark to had given us, you know, kind of um, some questions to kind of lead us through. Yeah, and he said at the end, you know, the share care, um, and um, so my I did kind of a dedication to my next door neighbor who's recovering from heart bypass surgery oh. who does not know his need for the Lord. We talked to him, but he really is very close. So just uh, praying that the Lord will prepare the way for him to receive him and that we will be a faithful witness. So the first question, I, I divided it up by Mark's questions, was what has God conquered for me? So in my poem, it's one day I will tell you face to face. No, silent before you. For you forgave me all my sins. That burden was overwhelming me and separating me from you. But you conquered my rebellious heart. You suffered and died for my transgressions and sins. I lift my hands in total praise to you, my Savior. What awesome deeds has he done for me? One day I will tell you face to face. No, sitting at your feet. Mm -hmm. For you redeemed my life from the pit of substance abuse. That addiction was overwhelming me and separating me from you. While I was blaspheming, you were protecting me. And you lifted up my head 
and revealed your word to me. I lift my hands in total praise to you, my Redeemer. What has he created for me? One day I will tell you face to face. No, walking in the garden by your side. For the beauty of your creation refreshes my soul. How lovely to hear the birds sing outside my window in the morning. That's what I miss most about not being able to hear for four months. But I am healed and listening to the rain while the waves lap the shore. I lift my hands in total praise to you, my creator and healer. What does the coming king mean to you? One day, I will be face to face, singing, yes, singing praises to you in a white robe purified by the blood of the lamb, a mighty concert of praise to him who sits on the throne and unto the lamb. How I long for that day when I dwell in a place of no more suffering, sin, illness, or death. And I am also without spot or blemish, restored to right standing before Almighty God. I lift my hands in total praise to you, my King. Yeah. You're not going to go sit down without getting prayed over. <laughs> okay, oh, Dale. Wow. Dale? Yeah. Well, Lord, what a beautiful song Clarice has written to you. Beautiful, Lord. Um, She's taken to heart what you have poured into her, and by filling her, she's overflowing with praise to you, Lord, which is so much what we all want to be. I pray, Father, that you will bless her and that you will bless her to be able to share this with her neighbor. And, Father, your word won't return void. She's already shared with him the way of salvation. I pray now that his heart would be softened and if you need to chisel it open that you would lord you've already he's already had a physical operation now we're asking for a spiritual one thank you so much for clarice in jesus name Amen. 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 wow i love the way she goes no i love that okay anybody else got it can be any psalm that you chose from any of these that we've learned. Glad to see you back. Oh, come on. I know y'all. You just don't want to do it out loud. You know, I was when I was thinking about it last night, and I said, what song could I do about joy? I think that was our last lesson. Uh-huh. Uh, and it came to me, I don't maybe some of you all remember this, when we were uh, children in Sunday school, the song that they taught us about joy. Joy, 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 down, down in, in my heart. heart. Where? And, that, <laughs> and that's what came to me, you know, yes. it's got the love of Jesus down, down in, in my heart. heart. Where? <laughs> I just couldn't, it was over and over, and that was the first thing I thought of when I got up this morning. Oh, joy, I love joy, that. Joy. I still love that song. I sing it to my grandkids <laughs> that are, you know, in their 20s now. <laughs> I a little 10 year old. And, just teaching it to her, but um, yeah, I mean, I mean, since she was little, but and her favorite was always, if the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on the tap. <laughs> oh, so yeah. 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 That one. oh, that's yeah. one that yeah. got tacked on later, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> tacked on later. That's tacked good. on. There you go. Yeah. I was in a blizzard um, driving to my daughter's house when, well, she was uh, in law school in Kentucky. And um, they had given me this car, and I was unfamiliar with it. It's so, it's a wide out. Cars are sliding off the road everywhere. Oh. It's dark. And all I could think to do was sing the We Sing songs, oh. Bible songs that I had sung with my kids when they were little. That's how I was able to get down the road. Sometimes it's the very <laughs> basics that get us through. Yeah. It really mm -hmm. is. And I love the songs because yeah. you're using both sides of your brain. You're memorizing and you're singing and that's why we can remember those songs mm -hmm. anybody else or you want to or we can go back and the questions that are in here are great to ask um i have for, one more thing to share yeah. with y'all if you don't mind go you ahead. Know, the other um 
an assignment, I guess, that we had was to do the Song of Lament. Yes, I that was the first of them. I wrote three of them. I have a lot of sinus issues. That's how, how I wasn't able to hear for four months. But I recently had pneumonia, right? Uh -huh. And so I couldn't breathe. It was so bad that really there was no, you know, walking into the doctor's office. They didn't have to put the stethoscope on me to see if I was wheezing or not. Yeah, I was yeah. honking. You know, yeah. it was so loud. So, you know, I got really concerned about, you know, being around a large group of people. Am I going to get sick again? You know, once I got well. So I wrote, you know, this, this, my version of this song of lament in the midst of when I was sick. And I mean, it was like I had been on antibiotics, two different courses, multiple steroids, you know, at that point in time for, you know, quite, quite a number of days. And I mean, I was not getting better. I had to go back and get it again, you know, but I, when I wrote my song of lament, the next day I was fine. I was not wheezing for like the, when I got up wow. to midday. And then I started sinking. It's like, okay, I am not going there. I am not going there at all. And so I went back to my song of lament. Well, isn't that because song it was an three? encouragement to me that I had at least been able to turn the corner. Five. Yeah. And that was that was it. And I wrote three of those. That's okay, that was it. song five. Yeah. Okay. Or three. 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 Song three. Okay. Yeah, I wrote well, three. Why don't you go ahead and Why don't you go ahead and share that with us? Because well, that was the that was the song well of written. I, I wrote three of them because of the concerns that was on my heart. One is with our government and the attacks that, that go on, the vicious fight. So that one's not settled yet, right? <laughs> I'm still going to come back to that one. But, um, oh, Lord, how serious are my illnesses? They are taking my strength. The doctors are saying that there is no cure, only management. But you heal all who come to you, oh, Lord. You say the word, and we are healed. To the Lord, I cry aloud, and he intercedes for me from the throne. Selah. I rest, sleep, eat, and the Lord sustains me. I'm not afraid of passing, for my eternal hope is in you. Arise, O Lord, with healing for me. Gather me under your wings of protection. Heal me, O my God. Restore my breath to the amazement of the doctors. Suddenly from the Lord came my healing. His blessing is upon my lungs. And he is a blessing to his people. I wrote the last part after that. Oh, that came later. Mm -hmm. that's awesome. Wow. It was awesome. It was, it was oh. so awesome because it was just so dramatic. <clears throat> I couldn't get well, and then suddenly I was on the way. Wow. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was to the glory of God. And that's why we do this. It's all to the glory of God. <laughs> and sharing is encouraging. Sharing is encouraging. Yeah, I. I love that Mark reminded me there are questions at the end. So we know the question that was at the end of this one Clarice shared with us. When have I seen God as my shield? Be specific. So you, you've shared that. Anybody else want to share your specific time that you've seen him as your shield? How about when have I seen him as my sustainer? Constantly, yeah. Uh, Diane, I would like to share with you all. Uh, I was really, really <clears throat> sick with, not sick, that's not the right word, but I was becoming totally incapacitated. Oh, my. Totally. <clears throat> I couldn't walk without a walker, and that has been since I have started here. I was going to a doctor, I have AFib, and he had me on some medicine. He moved his office, and I decided something's just not right. So I talked with my uh, internist, and I went to another doctor, and he said, how long have you been on this medicine? I said, almost three years. He said, oh, you should never have been on it that long. <laughs> so I oh had a meteorodone a toxicity. Oh. And had I not gotten off of it by spring, I would have been gone. I have a friend that I was going down the exact same path with the same doctor, the same medication. Oh. So, Dr. My doctor said, I'm not ready to put you to pasture. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, what a nice way of putting it. <laughs> so I guess the other doctor was ready to put me to pasture. I guess so. <laughs> so anyway, 
I felt that was God's intervention and Amen. that I do still have things that I need to do. Amen. Perhaps it's my daughter. <laughs> you know, perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> perhaps it is. Thank you for sharing that now. Wow, to think a medication could cause. Oh, yeah, no, it was, uh, it has damaged my lungs uh, oh, and I won't get what I've lost. Uh, but I can build endurance. Yes. Um, it had started to work on my kidneys. I could not walk without a walker. Uh, uh, my legs just wouldn't go uh, uh -huh. strong enough uh -huh. for me to stand and do it on my own. I'm so sorry. It's and that important. all has happened since I have been here. Uh, wow. I don't wow. know if, uh, you know, I started missing last year that's and true. that's what it yeah. was well i praise god that you're good it's a good idea to get a second opinion yeah. Always. Yeah. Yeah. not a problem yeah. Diane, yes i i have a, a kind of a story good when i went through menopause uh, okay first of all just to do you want to come up here so everybody oh, can sure. hear you i thought my voice went oh well <laughs> but there's some behind you or this time <laughs> this way you can oh. <laughs> okay well, to start with um when i was a child my mom had a mental illness called, um, I can't remember the name of it, but it was a break from realities. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I knew who my mom was and sometimes I didn't. And this started as a very young child. So I had this thing in my mind, always growing up, that I was probably going to have mental illness, okay, because my mom was. So anyway, when I moved here, got in my 40s, I started going through menopause. <laughs> Thought you were going crazy. And I started <laughs> having, <laughs> I started having really bad crazy. mental problems to the point that I couldn't get off the couch. I would lay on the couch in a ball, and my husband would come home from work and pull up his chair and sit by me because he didn't know what to do. So I was like, I don't know. And I was praying, God, just take me home because I don't want to live like this. So anyway, I went to our sweet friend, Dr. Lesh, and I went to our church for years. Just now moved to Dallas. But anyway, we're talking, talking about menopause. And he was Peggy, three things I've seen. Women who have no symptoms at all. Women who have hot flashes and a little bit of mood swing. And women I've had to put in, in mental institutions. You're there. So, I want you to go on these medications. I'm like, no, Dr. Lash, I'm a Christian. I can overcome this. <laughs> oh, oh, he's like, no. Do you trust me? Well, yeah. But why can't I overcome it? Because, number one, doctor, God created doctors. He created all the chemicals on the earth for our good. They're not always perfect, and we're not always perfect, but you need this. So, oh, uh, because I was so desperate. So I went on the meds, and within a month, I was back to my stuff. Oh, yeah. And so what I realized, that God, and I had been praying, just either heal me or take me, you know. So God used our sweet friend, Jack Lash, <laughs> to bring me back to normal, <laughs> whatever that is. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, the sweetest thing that came out of that, Dr. Lash called all the men in the church whose wives were like our age. <laughs> and he said, this is what you might this is what's ahead for you, possibly. I just want you guys to know what you, what you, how you might need to be prepared to help your wife. So I felt like that helped a lot. Wait a minute, too. <laughs> I remember Peggy going through that. I do, and she was the. Um, you were the. Weren't you the treasurer? Bookkeeper. Or the bookkeeper yeah, at yeah. the church. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I would go in there and she would go, oh, God, I just can't do this. And we were all praying for her. I am so proud that you listened to a physician because Jack Lesh also did the same thing for my husband when he didn't want to go on hospice because he said, I feel like the Apostle Paul it's it's a win-win for me. I can die and be with him, or I can stay here where I might be needed more. And so my son called him because John had been <clears throat> trying to make this decision for a year. And you know what he did? He came in and he just sat down and said, go ahead, talk to me, John. And John started telling him all these things he wanted to do. And he said, aren't you just ready to rest? And it was like, 
Oh. Yes. <laughs> and it was God speaking right through him. Yes. But I also want to say, you know, if you need a mechanic, you don't just lay hands on your car. <laughs> <laughs> know that God can do that. Yes. Absolutely. I know he Absolutely. can do anything. He can make. He could turn this into a stack of money. <laughs> if, if you need some, your car fixed, you're going to go get it fixed. Yes. God did create all of those things. Right. And we have chemical imbalances we can't deal with. That's right. And so, yay, I'm so proud. Yep. Okay, Lord, we're going to pray for this woman and for anybody else in here that needs a doctor. Father, I pray that you would be a remind that you would always remind Peggy that, um, Sometimes we do. We do need help, even as Christians. I see so much damage done to Christians who are told you just don't have enough faith. Mm -hmm. And that's just not true, Lord. That is just not true. We need to put our faith in you, but we also need to listen to the wisdom <coughs> that you've given man and woman to send us to someone to help us because you are eventually the one who does it anyway. But if we don't go get help, the devil would like nothing better than to run us down. So thank you, Father, that we, we don't have to listen to his voice. We can stomp on him and say, no way, I'm listening to the voice of my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Fear now that you're on the, oh, fear is a liar. I'm so proud of you for sharing. Well, I'm thankful, and I'd like to share it with more young women. Well, oh, that would be wonderful. <laughs> I apologize. My daughter just called me and said she needs help now. Okay, I'm sweetheart. She has a bunch of sick kids. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'm Thank sorry I missed out there. I'll catch the Thank you. So okay. Much. All right. All right. Now, see what power there is in what God can do and sharing what God can do. I'm going to just share that um, I tried to write a song. From this first one, I don't know how many of you know this or not, but my two oldest granddaughters have been estranged from me for three years. And um, estranged. estranged. They um, same mother. They have the same mother. Yeah, and she was my son's first wife. And um, oh, oh, be nice. She is. <laughs> be nice. I'm going to. I'm not going to call her. <laughs> They told me they didn't want anything to do with me ever, ever again. Uh, they didn't want any of my money. They didn't want any, anything from me. And I was just brokenhearted. I, I never even responded to them because as soon as I was going to write this horrible, nasty gram to them, <laughs> God reminded me that Jesus stood quiet before his accusers. And so I, I was quiet to them. I wasn't real quiet to some of my close friends, but I did let it go and prayed, and I prayed for three years while I still sent every birthday, every Christmas, every Valentine, every single holiday, I sent them cards just like I did. There's seven of them, eight of them now. Um, and I would send every one of them a card with a gift card in it, and for their birthdays, I'd send them everyone money. And for Christmas, I'd send them all gift cards or money because that's always what they wanted because they didn't want me to pick stuff out. And I get that. I didn't want my mother picking stuff out. And I didn't want my grandmother picking stuff out. But I, I didn't not send them stuff because I just couldn't. It just was, mm -hmm. I mean, they were my, everybody who knew me in Bible study when Eileen and Mia were born knew that they were just the light of my life. So I, I've prayed for them all along, and um, the day that I sat down to write this song, I told Mark when I came in the next week, I had a call from both of them. Wow. Oh, wow. How old are they now? 25 and 21. Wow. Oh. And um, <clears throat> they both asked me, they, they never would say, will you forgive me? I did such and such. But they did say, I've missed you so much. And you have never paid attention about not sending us anything. And every time, and one of them said, every time I got a card, I used to tell my mom, just send it through the shredder. And my mom would say, what if there's man money or a check in it? And she said, I don't care. And But her mother didn't, which I praise God for. She didn't shred them. 
she just put them in a pile and left them sitting on the counter until Mia took them. And she said, I, I just can't believe you didn't do what I asked you to do. But I'm thankful because now I see, and I wrote notes in there, you know, that was the main thing I did. But, um, so I just have to say, listen when you want to jump and go ahead of God, because I'm real good at, I just was talking to Judy Saturday at the conference about praying for something for me and something one of the guys had said, she just repeated back. She said, you know, one thing that one man said was prayer can buy time. So if you're waiting and you're praying, don't go before God. Let God buy that time for you. And he will tell you when the time is right. Mm -hmm. So that was beautiful advice and I'm taking it and praying and um but I want to tell you nothing is hopeless nothing mm -hmm. and these girls were well one of them is still not living the way I'd like her to but you know what finally God has said she's right when she says this is my choice mm -hmm. I said but it's a horrible choice and it goes against your word and he goes that's between her and me not you and her that's right. there you go I almost said now wait just a minute <laughs> <laughs> but I do know I'm not going to wrestle with the Lord <laughs> or a donkey. <laughs> so anybody else, please share something. I don't care if it's big or little. It's all, oh, oh, here she comes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, my heart's pounding. You know uh -huh. when your heart pounds, you know you got to share something. <laughs> um, I haven't been faithfully coming because we've been working with conference and all that. So I haven't been in the class with you. And I didn't real I didn't know about the assignment of writing your own song either. But um, I just feel like I should share this that sometimes you don't have to write your own. It's almost like God has already written a psalm for you. And and one day you will need to read it. And and uh, and God did that for me. Um, I don't know how many of you know I was a missionary in South America back in 1985, 86. Boy, it's been a long time. And I probably experienced the worst um, thing um, in my life when I was there, uh, and without a lot of details, um, but. It was a breaking place of my life because I had, you know, I had um, given everything to God, be a missionary, even sold my piano, <laughs> and so I got have a keyboard, portable keyboard, and uh, and I, you know, and I was on that road of just full time service, and and I thought, you know, God's going to use me greatly, and I wasn't there a year, and I ended up coming back on a medical furlough because I was so sick they couldn't even figure out what was wrong with me and I had spent time in the hospital and yeah you could take care of symptoms but you can't heal the person you can't identify it and so I ended up coming back to the states and uh, and found physical healing but I was emotionally dying uh, due to just things that were happening uh, within the ministry and uh, and I had come back a broken person thinking I failed God you know if you're a missionary and you don't do a good job there what can you do <laughs> I just and so there I had a lot of misunderstanding about ministry and about uh, just service and about working within an environment that uh, was unhealthy uh, within my team and different things and Anyway, um, that was back then, 1980s, and I carried that brokenness because I never, I never got healing. I never got counseling for it. Um, I, had, I, I never got to the roots of what it was that broke me and, um, until, until about 12 years ago when God put uh, a counselor in my life. Um, I went seeking for counsel for one thing, and God had him deal with this thing. <laughs> and, uh, and one of the exercises that he had me go through was 
to write down everything that happened to me uh, in that experience in South America. And, and he says, I want you to write it all down, every little detail, every feeling that you can remember, every comment that, that just pierced you, and on and on. So I did. And that thing, I filled a notebook. I mean, it was incredible how detailed I remembered emotions and feelings because I had never, I, once you leave something, you don't want to go back to it because it hurt no. too much. <laughs> But I allowed myself to go back to it. <coughs> it's really hard. <laughs> but I did it. And uh, so I came back a couple weeks later. And I thought, oh, God, he's going to read my notebook. And, uh, and so well, I'm sitting there, and I'm waiting for him to ask for it. And I said, aren't you going to ask for my notebook? And he goes, oh, no. I would, I would never read that. That's between you and the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I was like, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. And then he said, but what I do want you to do, I want you to take it back home. And I want you to ask God to give you something in his word to tell you that all of that has been taken care of and that you are free from that. Because I let it keep me bound mm -hmm. in so many ways. And, uh, and I thought, well, God's not going to do that. <laughs> I mean, I know he loves me, but that's a lot because there was a lot there. And uh, he goes, no, nope, God's going to do it. And then once he gives you something, however long it takes, I want you to take your notebook and I want you to burn it mm -hmm. and make it a memorial mm -hmm. to God of thanksgiving for what he had given you. So I went home and I it didn't take long. <laughs> and I, I'm just I'm searching everything and I went to the Psalms because I know David and I, you know, we're like siblings, you know, he's very emotional. <laughs> I always see David as emotional in his uh, Psalms and he just pours heart out. So I, I just read through and I had a psalm that ladies, it was written for me. And uh, and David was told one day, this is going to be for that lady who's all broken. <laughs> and, you're, and it's going to heal her. And it was Psalm 116. And if I may, I, I'm going to read it out loud to you. Because without knowing details of what I went through, if you just this was me. This is what God did for me and said to me. Um, Hang on, I'm going to get my Bible for my Yeah, and, uh, and, and it's really incredible, very personal. And it says, I love you, I love the Lord, because he hears my voice and my supplications. Because he has inclined his ear to me, therefore I shall call upon him as long as I live. The cords of death encompassed me, and the terrors of Sheol came upon me, and I found distress and sorrow. I was so depressed that I asked God to please let me die when I was in South America. I was scrubbing my floor, <laughs> and it just was like, I can't live anymore like I am because the details of things happening and at that time was they were, I was being told how I was made and how I interacted with people wasn't acceptable. I was too happy. I, I wore too bright of clothes. I did lots of things that were silly. It's like, and I didn't know the language well enough, so I couldn't talk to them either. And, and it was like, is there anything positive about me? And the answer came back, no. And so I was so depressed because I couldn't be a person. I couldn't be how, who I was. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. Oh, Lord, I beseech you, save my life. And he did, because I ended up having to leave. I got so sick. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yes, our God is compassionate. The Lord preserves the simple. And I'm a very simple person. I'm, I'm not very complicated. You, you probably know everything about me in about 10 minutes. <laughs> but the Lord preserves the simple. I was brought low, and he saved me. Return to your rest, O oh my soul, 
for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have rescued my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I shall walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed when I said, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my alarm, all men are liars. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I shall lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I shall pay my vows to the Lord. Oh, may it be in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his godly ones. And I felt like I was dying, but I think part of that for me was I had to die to what I thought was full-time ministry to God. That was part of my death, too, because I just, I just had a warped thought of what it meant to serve Jesus. And... Uh, and because it, you can't serve Jesus being something else or someone else. You have to be you. And I was just a mess. And and so he wanted me to let that go, I think. I, he said, you got to let go of what everybody thinks of what service looks like. Because he knew me. Verse 16, oh, Lord, surely I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you, I shall offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I shall pay my vows to the Lord. Oh, may it be in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. And he delivered me. And that psalm was my song of deliverance. And that was like 12 years ago. And it's like every day I get to serve him. How I'm wired. Yeah. And, uh, and to him be glory. <laughs> and the joy of the Lord is ours. <laughs> Amen. And so, Father, we just lift up Tammy, thanking you this day that you broke the bondage of mm -hmm. all that hurt and fear and all those lies, Lord. Thank you for that. Thank you that you gave her Psalm 116 to put her name in. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 One thing about it, it is hard to rewrite, you know, to write something that somebody's already so perfectly done in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have time for another one if somebody wants to share or somebody wants to answer one of the questions at the end of these lessons because there's some good ones. Um, do I take joy in the promise of a rich life now and forever? That was from last week. Do you take joy in that promise? I know I do. A rich life now and forever. I remember when my husband died, few, probably a week before when he was still able to talk, but barely. He said, I want you to promise me that you're not going to grieve. I went, oh, there's no <laughs> way I'm going to promise that. And he said, but I want you to grasp life, not just the abundant life. I want you to live an overwhelmingly abundant life because God has given you that. And don't focus on what he's taken from you. And I know he said that because he knew I would. Oh, woe is me. He's <laughs> taken the only thing I ever loved. And I would have. And there were times I did. But he would always bring me back to, what have I given you? What have I given you? And I want to encourage all of y'all to do that. Loss is hard. We all know that. Jane's got it pretty fresh right now. Loss is hard. But one thing, I don't know if any of you know the Collier family. They go, they go to Creekside Bible, but he, they're also involved in the seminary. Naomi and Tartan lost their little three-year-old girl one day, right after the 1st of uh, January. And it's been... Golly, I think it's been 10 years yeah, ago. I would think 10, yeah. Yeah, I think it has been. Um, and it was right out in their front yard, right out where they live. And after John died, she came over to see me one day. And I can't imagine a loss like that. And I can't imagine staying in that house, but they were very, very brave and trusted God and I said, I thought this would be easy since he suffered so long. Mm -hmm. And it's not. It gets harder every day. And she said, I want to give you a little hint that helps me every single day. And I swear to you, I say it every morning. She said, 
Ever since Amy died, the first thing I do when I wake up is go, one day closer. Oh. And at night, I say, one day closer. And that's what I've been doing. Because it does make you realize, only one day closer. One day closer, and I'll see him again. One day closer, and I'll see her again. And I'm one day closer to seeing Jesus. And it really did help. I mean, it's like Mark said, do you say, oh, Lord, it's morning, or good morning, <laughs> Lord. Yeah, yeah. But um, that helps me, and I hope it. I hope it'll help y'all, too in some way, because when you lose someone and they're in heaven, you're, they're not lost. You know exactly sure. where they are. And um, just, the way it, just the way it is. So if nobody, Julie, did you want to share anything? We'd love to hear from you if you do. Just that I have enjoyed um, hearing everyone today. And um, Mark said something last week about the joy, um, the acrostic for joy, and yes. always being Jesus, others, and then yourself. But he said, Jesus, and then nothing between me and Jesus. Yes. And I thought that that's really, um, that's really kind of, um, yeah. And the thing that's funny is that when he was in Midland teaching us, these th same psalms, I missed that. <laughs> so I had to come back and get a refresher course on it. Um, oh. <laughs> but I've certainly enjoyed um, the time that I've spent with the ladies there and with Mark um, through this ministry. Yes, thank you. Uh, we, we all have too. We're looking forward to him coming back next week. And thank you for saying that because Sharon Cox... Our sweet little lady who's gone through so much with her children um, sent me hers and asked me if I would read it to you today. Uh, as you all know, Danielle has got some kind of an autoimmune disease and without these infusions that her insurance paid for but won't anymore, she really is not able to do anything. So she said... Um, she sent a note and she said, I wanted to thank you for listening and praying with me last week at Bible study. I shared with Danielle about the Jesus, others, I mean, Jesus, nothing, and you. And she said, I'd really been praying about whether I should. And after you prayed, you told me I should because you felt like this would bring glory to God. So she said, I went home and I shared with her about the lesson over joy and the journey. And she was like, well, duh, mom, this is what I've been trying to tell you. I know I get frustrated and disappointed with no answers. And I get very upset with the way doctors are treating me now. But I know God has me one way or the other, and I will be okay. Amen. Isn't that great? That's from her daughter. So she said, I won't be at I won't be at Bible study because I have to take Psalm in, but this is what I wrote. I just wanted you to know that righteous ones like you and all the ladies at Bible study are, are what I cling to. This isn't her Psalm yet. She just wanted me to tell you all that. I was at a point where I didn't know how or what to pray for me or others. I was scared that God wasn't there and losing my dad was kind of the last straw. Through you all and the Bible study and prayer meetings at my church, I have learned that he has and always will be there. Mm -hmm. So through this, I have learned the importance of righteous ones coming together and praying. I am so glad I made myself go. I also <laughs> learned to check in more on my friends and family, and isn't that a good reminder for us? I sat down and wrote my psalm. Oh, Lord, through this valley... And storm of medical mysteries, you have been my comfort, my help, my foundation. Your grace and love have brought me, have brought into my life your righteous ones. They have been there to lift me up and pray, even through the darkest times. Let me pause and look at the mountains. Listen to the rain. Watch a bird in flight. These creations were not impossible for you, and neither is healing and taking care of 
of my family. You know every hair on my head, every tear and every heartache. You know without me speaking, but you love. You know without me speaking, but you love and meet me with open arms when I cry out to you. You are ready to hold us just when we, we just need to ask. You are a God that answers prayers always. Just as you made the different seasons for the tree to grow, so have you made the different seasons for my life journey. May your roots forever take hold of me and lead me on the path you've laid for me. For faith does not make things easy, it makes them possible. Mm -hmm. But with me, be with me and let me be your light to others, uplifting them and bringing them closer to your love until we meet again in heaven. For when I awake in heaven, I will be fully satisfied, for I will see you face to face. I just wanted to share that. <laughs> Pray for sweet Jaren Cox. She took her little boy in this morning because he's got some kind of a learning disability and they're trying to get that ironed out. This is one, I've known her since she first came to faith years and years ago and she was in the Bible study there. And this is one of the sweetest women, and she has she has grown. Her faith is big, and she keeps having these obstacles in her life, but she and her husband, Jason, keep pressing on. So I love that. So, Father, we just thank you for today and for all the ladies that shared today, and even those who didn't. Lord, I know you've done mighty works in their hearts. We pray for Sharon and little Danielle, and I pray that, that when she has that spinal um, tap, that you will be with her and hold on to her, because I know that's not easy. Father, we thank you for the good news we heard about Carmen today, that she's, or uh, last night, that she has opened her eyes and she's probably going to a private room today. You are working miracles in her life, Lord, and we thank you for that. <clears throat> thank you, Father, that even when we may be uh, sedated and unable to communicate at all, that you're communicating with us. I thank you for that, Father, that we're never alone, not ever, ever. And that's really quite an amazing thing since you have hundreds of millions of people that you love and you're never leaving any of them and and yet you show up for me wow father we thank you for today and i pray for mark and melissa that you will bring them back home safely this afternoon pray father that um you will multiply their time this week as they do what needs to be done as i pray that for all of us father we all have pretty full schedules, but you can put in order what you want us to do, and we don't have to do everything. I love it that you tell us, you know what, just because somebody asks you to do it, it doesn't mean you have to do it. Ask me first, mm -hmm. and then let your yes be yes and your no be no. Thank you, Father, for this day, in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, I'll see y'all next week. Thank you, Julie. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.